Many know me as Vice, the DJ collecting travel miles around the world, rocking clubs night after night. What you may not know is that I'm a native Angelino, self-described foodie, people connector, and enjoy driving new friends to experience the come up on some good tacos in the city I proudly call home. From the valley to the west side to everywhere in between, this is Electric Taco. Electric Taco, about to pick up my brother, Jesse Torero. Cinema Giants legend right here. Let's start it off like this. Welcome aboard Electric Taco. Yeah. What's up, Jesse? What's up? What's up, Good my to brother? see you, bro. Thank you for What's coming through, on? man. Welcome aboard Electric Taco. I love it. But you're already a Tesla driver already, so you already know how this yeah, goes yeah, down yeah, and all that. Yeah, so I don't have to do like the, the blast off or anything like that, right? No, 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 no. I got to jump off and ask you what did you have for breakfast this morning? This morning, um, nothing much, man. I just had some water and I had a, actually like just a protein bar. Okay, cool. So you keep it light. I keep it light in the morning. I, I you know, unless I have like a breakfast meeting, sometimes I yeah. usually don't do such a big breakfast. Okay, okay. But what about when you're out of the country or something like that, and you're like, you want to go in? You're like, do you, you let loose when you're on the road? Or, but some, you're on, you live on the road. Yeah, sometimes it depends, man. But I, honestly, most of the time it's like a smoothie or something light. Okay, you good. Know? I mean, too, I'm on coffee. That's it right now. Yeah, so coffee, a <laughs> At smoothie. And a small protein bar just to get me kickstarted for the day. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Because I feel if I eat too heavy in the morning, it's not good. It, 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 it wears you out. Yeah, exactly. You want to kick off your day the right way. You live in L.A., yeah, I've been I, I want to say you're you're a local pretty much now by this point, right? Oh uh, yeah, I've been I've been in LA twenty years pretty much. Damn. Yeah, 19, 20 years since um I officially moved out here, and I think it was like like two thousand or something like that for work. Yeah, I mean I came out here originally with dreams of being an actor and things like that, and yeah. you know I was going on a lot of auditions and stuff, and at the same time I always wanted to be a director. But I thought it was something that was going to happen later in life, you know? Gotcha. And then I just felt like I hated going on these auditions and people having like a false perception of what they expected a Latino to be like. Yeah. You I know, mean, especially the, back then already, you know, right? Oh, well, well, back then. You were the, early. The way they wanted us to act, they, they expected us all to have the same kind of um, accent. You know, they all wanted us to sound like Scarface. Like, was that, was there a certain someone that came in like, they're like, yeah, be like this. Oh, you're always, always. Like always but you know what, you know, if... Al Pacino, you know, I love Al Pacino. Yeah. He did a great portrayal in Scarface and created this sort of Spanish accent. Right. That, you know, all the casting directors thought was cool. So, like, <laughs> so when I came in and I had, a, you know, a little bit more of an American accent or, you know, a more urban sound, they yeah. weren't used to it, you know, and I was always on the darker side of the Latinos. They didn't really know what to do with me. Right. And you had an accent. You have a little East and West in you still to this day, yeah, right? Yeah, which is a little, you know, New York accent and, and um, very urban for the yeah. way, like, the sound in L.A. was at the time. And my look, you know, was a little bit to them leaning more African-American at the time than, than Hispanic. Yeah. You always felt like, you know, in this middle ground. So so you were, it's early 2000s and you're in L.A., moved from hometown, where's hometown rep? Yeah, New York. New York. Uh, Jamaica, Queens. My mother worked nine to five and my father worked from five to two in the morning. Yeah. So he had a late shift where he worked maintenance. And then my mother had, she worked for tourism, she worked nine to five. So when she was coming home from work and he was going to work, there was nobody in the household. Got you, So yeah. when we were younger, my mother, because our neighborhood was bad, my mother said, you know, she didn't want us in the streets for those two hours. Stay out. So she had yeah. bought a camera and she was like, look, entertain yourselves, do something. You know, she bought the video camera more to document us, but she gave us the camera. And not she was knowing, like, not knowing not what's going to happen out of this. So we started making movies. And because my father worked maintenance and he drove trucks sometimes and he would bring home stuff because he worked at CBS. But in the maintenance department, he would bring home stuff that they threw out or whatever. And sometimes wow. the albums would be like the soundtrack of a movie. Yeah. So we would get these soundtracks and then we would be like, oh man, we got the soundtrack for this one movie. Let's create a movie. But then we Around the, the soundtrack. Wow. Right. So we would make these little movies and, and my brother Yuli always wanted to star. Yep. So every movie was like Yuli on Elm Street, Super Yuli. <laughs> and, then, you know, and then I was like the co-star and we made all these home movies. And not knowing that anybody was going to have, like, want to be directors or anything like that. Right. So that created at least maybe the love and the passion for the art of filmmaking in a yeah. different way. And then I was starting college. I was originally going to study business. And my freshman year in college, 
I used to watch this show called Video Music Box. And um, when I was going to the audition, my brother was like, oh, I'm coming with you, I'm coming with you. So <laughs> the he star, came. the star. Yeah, and my it. brother had like a pimple on his nose, so he put like a <laughs> Band-Aid over it. You know, because he didn't like the way the pimple looked. So when yeah. he walked in the room, the director was like, oh, I like these guys. He looks mean with the band <laughs> like he got cut last night or So something. that movie ended up being Juice, right? Wow. So So now all of it was a, a moment in time where urban movies started to pop. So it created wow. opportunity for African-Americans, Latinos in front and behind the camera, right? So all of a sudden now there was this new opportunity. So I was like, you know what? I changed my major, started yeah. studying acting and worked as an actor a little bit. Did an episode of Law and Order, did something over here and was working as an actor and was training and putting in the work. Yep. And some of my friends that worked behind the scenes would always tell me like, look, you can be frustrated. You can, ha you can have issues. But yeah. we need more people behind the camera so that we can make the change. Yeah. You know, so so he, he was like, I would applaud you to think about working behind the scenes. So, you know, that sort of led a little bit of that ambition to say, you know what? Maybe I got to create a different opportunity, you know. You're thinking out the box. You You're know, thinking. it's like I didn't have another Latin director to look up to. There is so no like, one at that point, right? Like, especially not Dominican. So I'm like, who am I going to call to get yeah. advice? Yeah. Or to see if this is a path, you know, and my, and, you know, it was hard to sell that to my parents and say, hey, I want to be a director, and it was like, there's no reference <clears throat> at all, like of, of how no it <throat> could work, if it could be successful. You can't even research that at that time. You're not, they're not Google no. searching like Latin directors, no. like there's nothing. There's nothing. So it, it was. You're tough. thinking, you're, you're dreaming crazy, which I love right there. You're dreaming you know, crazy. I've been which is dreaming, amazing. yeah, I've been dreaming crazy for a long time. <laughs> still dreaming crazy. As you should. You still have a, a, a dream of being, I could, I could be an actor too at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't letting that go because yeah. I studied for so many years that I was like, it wasn't something that I just, you know, fell out of love. Right. I just felt like, you know, I didn't want my career to be in the hands of other people. Yeah. Love you that. know, where I have to wake up every day and hope somebody thinks I look Latino enough. And I was like, I can't I don't live want like the, that. I don't want my career to be in the hands of other people. And you still yeah, run with that. Yeah. You still run with that. That's it. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I want to have as much control as I can. Yeah. Yeah. So you hit a point where do you get like a chance, your first chance behind the camera where you get to, no, what, what, how what, does a breakthrough happen for someone? Yeah. Like, you know, there's so many people that don't work hard and there's so many people that are lazy or they don't put in the effort that yeah. if you just work hard and put in the effort, no matter in what position you're in, people notice. Exactly, so yeah. you could be the crafts service guy, the sound guy, the this. But if you're if you're busting your ass and you're working hard, people on set notice. So yep. I worked hard. My brother Ulysses was working on, on sets as well, working in casting, and we just worked hard, man. We we did it our, the best job we could, and we started getting noticed. But you know, we're working on all these films in New York, and the music video thing really starts to grow in New York and starts to blossom. And uh, it was all New York at that time because I'm born and raised in oh, LA. Yeah. It was, man, like, that was, like, it was my dream. Because the first time I ever went to New York was uh, 1998. And it was, like, that was the mecca. You know what I mean? Like, everything was still in New York. Of course, we had, like, our, our West Coast scene as well. But, like, yeah. the videos the, the, the videos that were coming out of New York were So, yeah, insane. like, you know, things were, like, you know, on the pop side, Mariah. Yep. On the urban side, it was Wu-Tang. It was yep. Method Man. It was 50 it was Cent. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, 50 came a 50 little came bit later. 50 came later. Wangsta came Onyx, like that. 2000. Onyx, Onyx. Yeah, because yeah. Wangsta came after I did Soul Plane. Yeah, 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 you're right. Okay, so so the earlier videos, you're right. Onyx. It was your Actually, I, I did um 50 before Soul Plane, then I did Soul Plane, and then... Then we, that. Yeah, yeah. Then this one director, Diane Martell, who we worked a lot with. Yeah. Her, she, her assistant left. Gotcha. And there was an opportunity to be, that she was looking for an assistant. So I started working with her, and we were doing like the Wu Tang videos. The first video I did with her was Meth and Mary. You know wow. what I mean? So you're you're what's your title there? Are you like a PA director's or, assistant? Or, okay, director's so assistant. So I'm working with her, and that's there was, a big title already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there yeah. was um there was a moment where I realized that some directors didn't always write the creatives and the treatments. So there was a, an opportunity where I heard some conversations happening, where. Uh, they um, didn't like anybody's treatments. Like they said, oh, you know what? Puffy didn't like this person's treatment, this person's treatment. So I, I found out that Diane at the time had a couple of writers. Now yeah. Diane is one of the most brilliant directors I've ever been around. So she 
controls your creative, but sometimes it's a team of people that are just executing the, the writing or sometimes yeah, pitching yeah. ideas. And, and the production companies sometimes do that for directors to help them do more work. So anyway, you know, I told her, I heard the conversation. I said, hey, I think I know why Puffy doesn't like the creatives, you know, because where the locks are right now and this and that and the streets are saying this. So I think he's looking for something. And she was hardcore. She was like, if you know so much, why don't you write the treatment? You're like, whoo. <laughs> so I was like, all right, cool. So I wrote a treatment and she you submitted You understood it. where hip hop was at the moment, right? And um, I wrote a treatment. We submitted it to, uh, to Puff and he liked it and picked her to do the video. It was uh, Money, Power, Respect. Oh, fire. Fire video with the locks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's... Money, the power. So, yeah. Oh, sh Money, power, respect. It's the key to life. Yup. Wow, <laughs> that's hot. With DMX and everything. Like, everyone, wow. I got to so go back and watch that video. at that moment, now I started receiving music. Okay. So now they're like, oh, shit, maybe Jesse has good ideas. So for the next, like, two years... I was writing Wu Tang, all these videos that were happening, but I was just getting paid as the writer. Were you? Was that? <clears throat> did they know you did that? Did you get credit? Did you get credited? Was a music video out and it said Jesse no, Terrero? Nobody knew. So, so, so people internally in the industry knew. Got you. Yeah. So, so, so people started to know, and some people like. There's no social media at the time, so you're not able to be like, yo, I worked on this, everybody yes. check it out. Yeah, and, and you know that. what? I, I used to see a lot of people do that, like a kid who write a treatment for a director, and he'll be on set saying, I wrote the treatment trying to take credit for it, Yeah. and I never said anything, you know, because yeah, you just yeah. got to wait your turn. You like, she was giving turn. me the opportunity, I was writing treatments, as I was writing treatments, she was helping me how to really write good treatments got you yeah i was learning from her like how i wrote a treatment that looked this big but she made it look this big like wow. so treatment writing to execution were two different things so now i'm getting the best school of life so why am i gonna be trying to run around cocky like i already got the answers when yeah, i did it yeah 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 you know so you so i just kept my mouth shut play my role and it yep. worked yeah so you know i was in there grinding and the people that needed to know knew right so, you, so so that ultimately opened another door for me with uh a director by the name of Chris Robinson, where his reps yep. were like, you know what, Chris was starting to blow up. And he was getting too many songs sent and they didn't have the bandwidth to write that many treatments. So they found out I used to write for Diane and they were like, hey, we got this kid, young black kid coming up from Baltimore. We would love for you to be part of his writing team. Okay. And then me and Chris, when I was coming up, ultimately Chris signed me to his company, Robot Films. Damn. So you're, you're literally at that time, you're writing, you're basically writing art. Because you're painting a picture off of a music song, of a songs that are already done. So you're you're basically like the same way a, a songwriter goes in a session and they're just playing a track, and you're and you're writing. You're, they're playing the track to you, and you're you're painting the picture of this is how it's gonna look. And every artist has to trust your. They have to trust you so much to paint this picture of what they have created already. Yeah, that's not I, visual I, yet. And I think that's why I excelled when it was my turn to be a director. Yeah. Because I was behind for three years some of the biggest videos you've seen. Nobody knows because I wasn't out there pitching that. But I was I was um, selling the idea, writing the idea, writing the creative, watching how it transformed. So by the time I got my shot, I could handle a call with 50 Cent. I could handle a call with an yep. artist. I could handle a meeting. I could go into a room at Interscope and pitch an idea because right. that's what I was doing. I already laid the groundwork. Damn. Man, we have so much more to talk about, but we're hungry. Let's yeah. get some tacos on, man. We're at Salazar. We're out here in L.A., and uh, it's time to get our taco, electric taco on. Here we go. Yes. Yeah,